Hi, my name is Ryan Massey, and I work uh, for Clicker. I run product. Um, so first, I'm going to give you some background about Clicker and why we're doing what we're doing. And then I can show you um, how we're relevant to the HTML5 conversation. Um, so Clicker has been around for about six months, publicly, and we were funded about a year and a half ago by Redpoint and Benchmark. Um, so the, the reason why we're around is that if you think about what uh, the TV guide was about 60 years ago, there were three channels, um, 24 hours during the day, and so there really wasn't that much content. And you, you really needed a guide based on time of what to find and what to watch. And when cable came around um, 30, 40 years ago, that expanded from three channels to about 100, 500 channels now, but you still navigate that through a time-based guide. But over the last 10 years with TiVo and then internet distribution, the way you find things to watch has changed pretty, pretty dramatically. It's not really about you know, time, it's about there are so many options and I need to figure out what to watch. And that's gonna be based on you know, what my friends are watching, uh, what's available online, um, you know, what's popular <coughs> now, and, and so on. So that's what Clicker is, is trying to solve. So Clicker is the first complete programming guide to internet television. So there are um, full-length programs all over the internet. Uh, you know, there's uh, full-length Mad Men on AMC, there's stuff on Hulu, um, there are thousands of sources of content, and they're all mixed in with a lot of clips, right? There are hundreds of clips, but finding that full-length episode of the show you want to watch is actually pretty difficult. So what we did was we created a search engine and a guide that is very structured that only finds the legal full-length episodes of TVs and movie, TV and movie content that's available online. So that's Clicker. And so how are we relevant to um, space and live discussion? So this is our, our website, obviously. Um, and people are using it on the computers. But what we found is that actually a lot of people want to um, access Clicker and the content on their television. And so right now there are um, you know, lots of different devices that, that people have to plug in um, the internet to the television. Um, there are boxes and sometimes you plug in your TV. But we found a lot of people just plug in your computer into your TV. We found a lot of people just plug in their computer directly to their TV and then they try to browse the web um, and find TV shows. So what we did was we built um, something completely in the browser that you don't have to have a download or a plug in for uh, that's based on Ajax and HTML5 to navigate our programming guide um, to the internet. And so you can actually uh, hook up a, um, a remote to do this as well. And I'm just going to use my left, right, up, and down keys to navigate this. So um, you know, I can navigate the content like this. So popular shows on a clicker today. And then you can go down and look for the content that I'm looking for. And so it's really fast and um, efficient because we're using a lot of the features. Um, Chrome offers. Um, from HTML5, and it also works pretty well on Safari and other um, newer, newer browsers. So let's say I want to find something like, you know, I'm a big fan of Lost. So I just type in Lost, and then we can search it and, and find anything you want. And if you want to add that to a playlist, so it's sort of like a DVR, you can add all the episodes of Lost that are available online um, to your playlist. So the interesting thing about this is it's not just about um, broadcast level television like Lost. Um, there are thousands of sources of um, high quality content that are just available on websites. Um, so if I want to watch pasta recipes, I just created my own pasta recipe channels. And so it's not just about 500 channels now, it's about an infinite number of channels um, that you can find. So you can search and basically find anything. Um, and let's say I want to watch, this is a, um, a really good web original movie called Pigeon Impossible. So let's say I want to watch it. It's on YouTube. So I just click on it, and then it loads, and it, and it plays. So when the video is available like this, we can play it right here. Um, but if it's available only on, let's say, the ABC website, we'll take you off the ABC where you can watch it. And then we preserve state um, using the HTML5 features to get you back to where you were within the browser. Um, so then there's a playlist feature, which is like a DVR. And then you can browse TV shows like that and filter by movies. <coughs> and you can discover web shows, movies, and music too. So, that's.
that's that. I'll take the, the second question first. Um, so since we're not actually hosting any of the video, um, in a lot of ways we're like a search engine. And people like us because we're pointing traffic to them. Um, if you go to Google and you try to find um, you know, full length episodes of things, you have to hunt through all the links. And we're actually saying, hey, you know, go to the ABC website to watch Lost because that's the best place to watch it. And we're making that very clear. So um, a lot of the, or, or the networks like what we're doing. And so it's actually not a challenge. And we're only pointing to the legal episodes where most search engines and guides that are trying to do this right now are pointing to illegal stuff. So they're actually you know, supporting what we're doing. Um, from a monetization standpoint, um, if you think about the fact that we're, we are a search engine um, and search monetizes extremely well, that's really the game, the game we're in. Um, and then you add on top of that the fact that we're in a very highly monetizable vertical, uh, TV shows and movie content. Um, you know, that answers the monetization question. What about an independent film guy? Can you, how do you distribute his content? So that's, I mean, that's really one of the problems we're trying to solve. That Kitchen Impossible content, I mean, it's an independent film. And what they usually do is they put those up on YouTube or Blip or Vimeo. And so we go through and we actually index those um, videos from those sources. So we don't index all of YouTube, we only index the really good high quality stuff. Um, and then our goal is to, if you um, check out our homepage, think we usually have a mixture of um, stuff that's only available on the web that's high quality along with things like America's Got Talent, which is you know on TV. So we're trying to get exposure to people like that. Question about uh, live content in HTML5. Uh, do you see live content is really benefiting for HTML5 because of the structure that exists in it? You can tell what's live when. So, um, so we actually launched a, a live channel. Um, so we're only indexing the high quality live feeds because if you go to Justin TV or um, Ustream, there's thousands of uh, feeds that you might not be interested in. So we only pull the legal ones out. But I think that's probably more of a question about organization than it is HTML5. I mean, we're using HTML5 as a way to create a great browser-based experience without a download, and then we're relying on the video providers to make it available, video available in HTML5, and then we can index that. Um, so. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, from Mobile we um, we actually talked to a lot of the guys like Fox, ABC and mobile video, um, and especially aggregation layers. I think that's how they see it. They were telling me this is the first thing which you're really looking at right now. This is where we look for innovation. Uh, could you tell us about, you know, you don't need to tell us who you talk to, but what are these conversations about, and why do these guys find you so interesting? In a little bit more detail. So on the, on the networks? Yeah. So, um, I mean, they, they find us, I think they're going to find anyone who is pointing their traffic interesting, right? So, and I think we're, we're in a good position there. So that's that's definitely why we have conversations um, with people like that. But then I think the um, the legal content question is also something that's very important. We're very careful not to touch or index any illegal content, and so you know a lot of people out there are putting illegal content next to legal content, and the networks don't make money off of the illegal content, and they're monetizing that in a legal way from their websites and from their partners like Hulu. Um, so it's another reason why you know, they're happy with what we're doing. So at SF Mobile, we usually try to ask two typical questions. Are you hiring and are you looking for funding? We haven't been doing that tonight, but we'll start with you. <laughs> so we are definitely hiring. Um, we're, we're looking for a um, front-end engineer and a back-end engineer with search experience. Ideally, um, and then we just raised our B round in February, so we're actually not looking. Yeah, with benchmarker. Right. Oh, so this, is, <laughs> this is just the press conference. The finals are not aren't streaming online, uh, so it's online after after the game's over. But I can look it up if you want. 